The new Volkswagen Caddy Alltrack is today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. There's a special story behind this vehicle because first of all you might think, okay, well, the all-new Caddy, we've shown you that vehicle already. So later on, if you want to hear some more about the car, you can check out the video description and also check out that link then. But what about the Alltrack? Is it just a design pack version here or is there more to it? We're going to explain to you in the exterior, interior and the driving experience today with a special off-road park because we are in a very nice off-road park here today. So in this off-road park, we'll have an off-road part. Look out for that and now let's go. To be honest, the Alltruck version is rather a design package for the exterior and also for the interior, you will soon see. That might sound, you know, just simple, a little plain, but for some that might be a game changer because, you know, if you look at the normal Volkswagen Caddy, well, it's not the design highlight, definitely not. But here with the Alltruck package, you can, for example, spice it up a little bit and then say, okay, you got something that is really versatile in the interior, but also now with the Alltrack package looks very cool. So I want to buy it also on an emotional level. And we can see it right here in the front because we have stronger lower bumpers and also with this contrast in the off-road look, a lot of black plastic than here. This color here, well, I wouldn't go for it. It's this kind of beige color. It's called um, Mojave after the famous desert. Well, it's, you know, for the car, we also seen the side profile together with the other, it's quite okay, but still I would go for the other color or what's your opinion on that one. Overall, I think for such a car that is, you know, really more focused on the spacious feeling inside, it has a nice modern look now also with the kind of sharp headlights and the horizontal lines we see that are transported in the front grille. So overall, I think this Alltrack design package from the exterior already is doing very well for that car. In the side profile, the Alltrack package adds this black bumpers here, plastic and well, they protect the car a little bit, but more have this certain off-road look then. And I think it suits the car very well. Also, it comes with 17-inch rims then. They are here in this two-color scheme and I think very beautiful for the car. So they have managed to spice up a car that is totally boring overall at first. But now it gets really interesting, especially because we have already painted the tires with some of our off-road driving here. <laughs> and that is, of course, even more fitting to this combination. The Alltrack version is only available with the short version of the Caddy. Um, this means 4 meters 50 in total length here. The Maxi with almost about 5 meters length is not available for the Alltrack version. And you see everything in the rear here is really form follows function really high the car, you have a lot of space, steep window lines, not playing much around with the design, but this car is really about the interior, we'll soon show you that one. And last thing about the Alltrack package, you got the privacy glass here in the rear. Well, you got some more privacy than in the rear, for example, but also, you know, a darker vision for the rear passenger, so it has also this advantage. But just from a visual perspective, from the design from the outside, of course, it looks a little bit more dramatic, a little bit cooler when you have the privacy glass on the outside. The contrasting lower parts we've seen in the front and also in the side profile continue also in the rear with black and also some kind of chrome color here. And I think adds a little bit more to the design feature of this car. Ground clearance. By the way, not connected to the all track, and I'll repeat that fact later on. Sometimes, you know, when I'm repeating facts during the video, it's just, you know, to remember the facts even better. Ground clearance has to do with four wheel drive or two wheel drive. So, here in this four wheel drive version, we have 2.5 centimeters more ground clearance here that helps us today on the off road track. Everything else, Caddy okay, all track says here with the logo, and the new generation of the Caddy has some 
let's say spiced up taillights here as well. It's not really much for design. You see here also very straight ending that a lot of the space again is used inside the car. This is the continuing scheme with that vehicle here. Let's get inside. This is a standard key fob and the doors speak for a very solid quality, I always like. And you see there is a very easy entry to the car. The all-wheel drive models, they sit a little bit higher as for the ground clearance, 2.5 centimeters, and that also gives you an easier access. It has nothing to do with the all-track, it's really about two-wheel drive, all-wheel drive. And then look at this interior. And there the all-track edition plays a role because we have a special steering wheel, for example, with contrast stitches on the inside and my all-favorite seats for the Volkswagen Caddy because on those seats here on the right, as you see, we got cloth on the inside, also an all-track logo stamp here on the seat, beautiful done, some nice contrast stitches and then microfiber on the outside and that looks already very cozy and I can tell you it is really cozy and you see the upright seating version is especially helping tall drivers so I would really recommend you to go for those seats here M maybe it would be the main reason for me to go for the Alltrack to get those seats other than that the Alltrack features some special covers for example in this kind of carbon style it's not really real carbon fiber um, but it is this kind of style and the same we can see also here there are more covers for example close to the steering wheel and also you will see it quite soon in detail when we continue further on to the cockpit and about the seating position I can just confirm that even if I'm sitting in a very low position I already get a very command driving view perspective the panoramic windscreen is giving me a great overview I have that upright seating position and yeah the car doesn't look that fancy on the outside I mean a little bit fancier surely with the all track version but the real advantage of the car is being in the interior here and having a lot of space available of course you can pump it up the seat pump it up yo <laughs> then you can go higher and you see how, how far it goes. And I mean, if you're not that tall, I'm 1 meter 86. Seriously? <laughs> Look at how high the seat is going. Um, this is the maximum now. And wow. I mean, so even if you're quite tiny, that will still give you a very good overview. And I mean, I have nothing against that it's a manual here because that has always the advantage that there's no electronics <laughs> that can fail. And sliding up and forth is also possible of course and manual command of the back part of the seat steering wheel front to me up and down that is also fairly possible and yeah well quite easy to control as well and well we got a little bit dirty already because we're on the off-road track but you can see it right now here that the pedals are from aluminum that is also part of the all track package here this car for the family and truly about storage spaces you can see it here at the inside of the doors there are some warning vests and also a bottle just placed there for example and if you move on to the interior and you can see here in detail now this is this carbon style cover we have here and looks quite fancy i mean why not a huge box here below, above the dashboard so you've got a lot of space here and I think it's very good that you can still close the glove box here manually and there's just a standard glove box which also can be cooled. You see the cooling symbol and you can either not use it or use the cooling function for that one. Then if we move on further here, first of all, for example, walkie-talkie or for some more bottles, beverage holder, well, they are not adaptive, so 
this is maybe thing they should improve further. Then we have this middle armrest. That's here, that's nothing. Some very really small space in here, whatever you want to place there. And in front of the DSG, shifting lever, automatic gearbox we have here. 12 volt power supply and one USB slot and one AUX. It's a little bit dark, you cannot really see it that well, but I can tell you so far, AUX and the USB slot. And this one here can also be placed for the mobile phone um, that, for example, the car antenna is helping you. Instruments, rather classic, analog, right and left, and digital in the center, and then you can um, choose what you want to see, for example, all the compass, or um, phone assistance systems, um, also consumption. Well, this is off-road consumption. It will go lower um, when we're driving on the road, of course, ACC and so on. Oh no, I don't want to listen to Alicia Keys. Let's keep that mute. Side mirrors, you can flip them from here, from in and out, and if you go right or left, and then electronically adjustable in which direction ever. And this one here is for the heating then, for the side mirrors. The air conditioning, you see it's placed up higher here. And that one you can really reach very well. And the controls are pretty standard, also from good build quality, definitely. Heated front screen, I'll tell you more about it when we're driving. Um, it's good to have it, but to me, it also reduces a little bit of visibility. And optional, we also have seat heating here, which is kind of uncommon for a caddy. This one here is based on the trend line. The middle trim level is the all-track um, setup. Um, so high line is even more expensive than all-track. But here we have kind of both a little bit combined. All-track plus a lot of extras, like for example here also two-zone AC. Autogefühl fun fact for today. AC is off. O, F, F and a small f. Oh, just a small f. But why is it that case? Why is that weird in the display? Because when you turn it on, you see the dot 5, the dot number is smaller. And that's the, how the display is set up. And therefore, if you have the right number smaller, you will also have the f smaller. The Caddy is not based on this MQB building platform from Volkswagen yet. Therefore, we don't have the biggest infotainment screen available. But this one really does the job. You see, it also has this proximity sensor that the buttons are popping up. And um, nice, also some visualizations. Or if you go inside the map, um, here menu, so you got this, this uh, kind of control like this, or also like this. So you have many ways. For example, this app connects. Um, you can also use Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Mirror Link, mirror your smartphone. Um, I'm getting an uh, iPhone 5, by the way, that next time I can show you that one then as well. So, you see here also can use uh, screw, zoom in and out, like a smartphone, and um, no, it's, you see, Mini Bratislava, and this is Vienna, so greetings to our fans from Austria, because we're in Austria today, and you see, close to the border already. So, that's the GPS, and Connect the phone, of course, also via Bluetooth. That's very easily done. And if you just activate your Bluetooth function here, um, all the media can put to the sources, Bluetooth audio, SD, USB, and so on. So overall, a very easy system. I really love the setup. You have the combination between hotkeys and still everything in this control. And also when you're driving, you're not only relying on the touch, but can also use that knob here to scroll and also to hit some of those functions, for example, and also for volume. So overall, I think a very good system, but you see it's placed relatively low and it's below the climate controls. And that means you have to look down quite, quite far and that one will play a role when we drive the car. And then let's take a look at the rear view camera. There it is. You can see it's quite good resolution and you also see what's coming from the side. And this parking sensor is active at the same time time there you can see it um, so you have both uh, aids visually and also from the sensor optional of course and that work is done here when you're driving to the front so the whole cockpit overview it is very clean has a great overview panoramic front windscreen and everything is very solidly built from the materials there's hardly anything to moan about besides that the GPS is really sticking very low 
And I think that will cause some problems when you're just like following the GPS while you're driving. And the um, GPS screen in the middle and the helper one, this is just um, kind of this 2D screen and without color that doesn't help you that much while driving. Other than that, and especially for the all track setup here, seats are my favorite. Other than that, it's of course not that much, di much different than you see in other um, KD, Ultra, uh, KD models. And you always have to think about the price, of course, because you know this Kelly here starts about 18,000 euros and 25,000 with the Alltrack, also depending always on the engine. And you can get an Kelly overall here, also two liter diesel, DSG, Alltrack, and some of the extras up to about 40,000 euros in Germany, taking German list price as a reference. So, and then that always gets quite off expensive. Let's get inside. Sliding doors here with the Kelly. That's um, also one of the most important parts. And before I get inside, let me already show you the flexibility. You see, we've got this all track design also in the rear, even with the microfiber on the inside. Very nice. With this straps here, you can flip the bench two third, one third. And then, for example, you can also access the trunk from here. That is possible. And then, when this one here is flipped, you can also activate the second lever. Yep. Uh, it's a little bit hard, so and then flip this bench completely. And funny thing is then, you see you've got an even loading space and all the way until the back and it gives you even more flexibility of course, because you can just put very long things in here then. So, and it's fairly easy everything. And so you can just pull that one here down again. Um, but you could also totally remove the seat by the way. Um, take some more effort of course, but you could do it. So back up again and this one will be the rather standard setup and good thing is also I can have a very easy access and I mean the car as I said is only four meters and 50 in length it's not too long for a car but you already have reasonable knee space because everyone is sitting upright you see here I'm with my one meters 86 still got some space here even if a tall driver is in front of me headroom we do not have to talk about that because I could maybe use, uh, I could wear a cylinder and still sit in the rear here. And again, this very spacious feeling you have here. And I mean, even with, with five adults, five grown up adults, there's hardly any other car I've experienced yet. I mean, besides some like big transporter like the Volkswagen T6 or Mercedes V Class, where you sit that comfortable in the middle rear seat and here it's almost like the you know sometimes it's a little bit weird to sit on there in the middle part but here it's really like a full rear seat and you can really have a relaxed travel feeling here so um really traveling with five adults is one of the most suitable cars for that one here definitely also have another full seat belt no problem also the easel fix um, uh, hinges here for for child seats that is of course a very important thing definitely and what else do we have in the rear? Well, we cannot, of course, we don't have anything for your arm, for, for, for your arms in, but again, no very soft seats also that it will give you comfort. And 12 volt power supply in the rear, as well as some vents, and there's um, some <laughs> nice privileges holder that's popping up. I think it's very good, by the way, that's here placed that way below, um, because just think of your children, maybe they have spilled some beverages at some point in your car and if it's here below near the foot mats surely easier to clean than it would land as on the seat and one signature compartment of the caddy is this here where you have an additional space um for example this is here also from the equipment from the car oh, let's get that out wow it's really fixed tight here you might wonder what that is Surprise, surprise, ta-da, it's the first aid kit for the tire and from Volkswagen Corporation you see here that's the way you can fix the tire and but of course you can place anything else up there and the good thing is when you even have a hard braking maneuver it won't hurt anyone because it's kind of just falls into there just I mean when you accelerate too hard maybe but there's also you know um, a small step in here that the things you put on there are also kept tight so again you can use kind of every inch of this car from the inside 
And you can even use that one for business. For example, you could put your jacket on here to have a very safe and clean spot for it. And that's the real secret of the car. You can get out then here, have two sliding doors, and uh, maybe we could do some like contest, like jumping through from, from the right to the left part. Maybe um, if one of our viewers can, you know, is some parkour champion, just would hop right through. And of course, in, especially when you have a lot of children, just, you know, install one of your children right there, go around and have the other one fixed here. And that is, of course, the most flexible way that is possible. Now to the rear compartment. You see, it's very huge. You have to pay attention and also, you know, we have to have space behind the car. That is the downside. The upside is that you can really stand below here. Even, yeah, it's almost, it's more than 190, definitely almost two meters, something at that end. If you're not that tall, you can always pull that one down with the strap here. It's also a very good solution. You see, it flips down automatically. Nice solution again. And such a low loading sill here. You can fix some tension belts right here. They've thought about every detail here and you see everything is kind of square and you have so much space here. That is really the very strong part of the car. And I can, if you just stay there, I can show you again how it looks from the rear part if you flip the seats like this and then for example the second step again. That's it. And there you can see how even it really goes here. And well, we have, of course, for example, can also remove that cover here. So you're really very flexible with the car. Um, you can even use it also for, you know, for sports. You know, when you want to transport the bicycle, maybe if you, um, if you want to remove those seats here completely, you know, then there should also be enough space for a bicycle, for example. So really enough ways to use um, the car really no? here here you can you can see that this one can be detached then i have just predicted in the comments that one of you writes okay thomas show us how is this bench removed and okay i'll show you first of all i have to set up here now that both stand upright both benches and then there's first of all one possible to even secure that position that's this one here and then you can put that metal here and then it's kind of secure that it doesn't flip down again. That's one possibility you have. So, and think about, for me, for me, for example, I want to um, put my mountain bike in here, then you can pull it right here, and that's already it. And then you can get that bench here out. Well, and best is when you have like two people because it's oh, really hairy. Oh, it's surely about 20, 30 kilograms, but you can really get that completely out in here now. Wow. There it is, Hulk Thomas active. Wow. I have the power over the all track. And look inside now fast, look inside how much space we have here. And well, now you could have mentioned, okay, Thomas, why didn't you just show us that with a single seat and not with a double bench? Yeah, I thought about that just myself <laughs> next time i would just do it with a single seat not with a double bench oh, but I, at least i got the workout for today i know you guys you always like it when we have those family cars because i really have to do some workout then so this better together with your spouse uh, everything else the single seat can be done quite easy but uh, really starting to like that system here because i'm really imagining putting my mountain bike in here Engine overview. First of all, let's talk about petrol engines. Available, we got there 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, CNG, 1.4 liters of displacement, then diesels, 2 liter TDI, that is exactly this one, and well, also in different horsepower variants. And we have the 2 liter TDI today because this one also can feature the all wheel drive, the four motion. Means front wheel plus rear wheel on demand. Front wheels 0 to 100% torque, rear wheels 0 to 50%. So you can maximum have 50 50 to the Bose XL. This is the top engine for all wheel drive 2 liter TDI, 150 horsepower, then combined also with the DSG dual clutch transmission. If you would pick the 120 horsepower variant, you would have all wheel drive also possible, but then with six speed manual gearbox.
let's go with our test ride. Start the engine. As I've told you, this is the 2-liter TDI, the famous Volkswagen 2-liter TDI. But again, just for your info, the vehicles that are sold newly are, of course, not affected by the diesel issue then. So, this 2-liter TDI we're driving for one thing, also because this is the only engine that is available with the all-wheel drive. And in two versions. 120 horsepower and manual transmission are with that one here. 150 horsepower and the DSG, the dual clutch transmission. Short German lesson, by the way, DSG stands for direct schaltgetriebe. What's well, like direct shifting transmission, would be the very literal translation. And the good thing about that one is that it's very relaxed in driving. And, you know, there have been some concerns because, especially in, um, in Japan, there were um, a couple of years ago a lot of issues with traffic jams and then the um, DSG failing, for example. And I've recently talked to some Volkswagen engineers and they say after this incident they have um, changed a little, little bit, you know, that it's more heat resistant. And so they say, and, uh, you know, we have to take the word for that, for that they say that those issues were resolved and um, as far as I know there weren't that many issues just after the incident. But if you have um, DSG in your car and had some issues or were very satisfied, put it in the comments Then uh, we also have a nice mix of, con uh, of comments of course already. So what about driving it there? Yeah. New Caddy Alltrack, you know, probably you have seen also our other Caddy review. With, where we present you a lot of different versions. If not, it will be linked in the video description. You can check that one out later and after we are finished with this one here. We'll also take some off-road riding very soon. Um, you maybe uh, realize that I'm quite often looking down here and that's one interesting thing already because I'm driving according to the GPS at the moment and well, it's placed quite down below there and that is to me a little bit irritating but well I do have the, the secondary information in the in the central screen but that's just rudimentary very easy uh, very simple um, display I got there and well that's not such a great help to me and so I would rather rely then on the bigger screen and um, so I'm, I tend to look down <laughs> a little bit there. <laughs> so because well when you when you just have the information right there uh, it might be working when it's uh, when it's a route that is uh, quite common to you but uh, you know when you when you don't know where to go it's always better to look at the at the bigger picture of the map that helps you really way more. About the steering, I can already tell you so far, well, it's, you know, very easy to steer. You don't need much power. Um, it's not as progressive, the steering, as, um, you know, we sometimes know from, from other models. But, um, you may you know, I'm cruising around here just a little bit um, to test the steering here so far. And you see, well, the steering angles they could be a little bit, little bit lower, and I'm doing some parking lot testing here now. Let's see how that one works out. For example, if I go to want to go backwards into, um, let's let's take that one between two cars. So because we also have the optional rear view camera in here, and that helps me really much because the car well is already five meters. Uh, 4 meters 50 in length and with the rear view camera I can then realize very well out of the additional beeper and yeah that works pretty well and you see that's also one good thing even if you don't have the rear view camera with this car because it has this square dimensions it works pretty well that you remain a very good overview 
Also this panoramic windscreen here in the front, that is um, really remarkable to see that because you really have a very nice panoramic view to the outside, especially when you, for example, thinking of going on, on, on a road trip and want to see some nice things in the, in the landscape. That will really help you very much. So I would say we go to the motorway now. We can also test some of the diesel performance we got here. As I've told you, we got the all-wheel drive in here and well, you can also get the all-track without the all-wheel drive. But well, it basically makes sense for the car because it's the all-track and an all-track would usually require all-wheel drive, I would say. So, let's see how, how the car behaves when we are a little bit faster in cornering. Going about 80 kilometers an hour now. Oh, I'm not pushed too far out of the car. The car is tilting a little bit. It's been not in a sports car, but still. It's not really, not really bad when driving fast with the car. And also when changing lanes here on the motorway, you see the window line is so steep. And that gives you a very good overview again also to all of the sides. Of course, it's also not a design favorite from the outside then, because you know when designers work, uh, work more with the car, they tend to you know, do some spectacular lines on the outside. Here it's more the case with form follows function. And we have a maximum space of interior here. And that is indeed the case because you got that very comfortable seating position. Very upright. I told you about the seats. They have also a very nice surface visually and also haptically. And especially when you're a tall driver like me, I got a lot of room above my head. And this is just so comfortable for traveling. And due to that windscreen, it is also placed way in the front. I could imagine going you know, hours and hours on the motorway now because it's really so spacious here all around here. And just imagine, you know, got the kids in the back. You know, also got a quite good connection here visually. Um, uh, well, there are also optional, some, some special mirrors to, um, to see the kids behind. But just like this, I mean, you always got everything in control here. And, and I think that's what's one of the main reasons to buy the car be very flexible and you know to have a kind of uncomplicated car you can do everything with so we're going to zoom out a little bit on the GPS again yeah that's it would be better if it would be placed higher I guess it's strange because the climate control way they maybe they argue okay you more use the AC commands quite more frequently than you use the GPS commands and therefore we put the GPS lower and the climate stuff higher that might be um, might be one reason then so the two liter TDI let's give it some acceleration I would say let's see for example we go from let's see the flexibility from 100 to 120 let's go now and that's it so, well, of course, it's no racing car, but if you have that 2 liter TDI in that top horsepower range here that is available for the Caddy, you also have reasonable acceleration power even on the motorway. The suspension is really very smooth, and um, as we felt in the corner, it's not too smooth, so it keeps you relatively stable on the road, but you know, there, are, there can't be any complaints about that. Because even if we go over some uh, side bumps or something like that, it's really, really no problem for the suspension. And that adds to this very comfortable traveling feeling. You just feel, think sometimes that this car would tilt more because it's so high. Um, but you know, as even if a car is very high, the center of gravity is usually kept relatively low. And Therefore, also, you know, that doesn't doesn't make too much difference. It's just, of course, that you have more wind drag, and that might also increase the consumption. Then, 
Uh, we can um, also take a look uh, you know, at, the, at the first consumption figures. We can do that. So, now that's, so now that's the current consumption. For example, if I'm, that's also interesting, maybe um, I could set the cruise control. So ACC we got there, adaptive cruise control, is automatically keeping the distance to the car in front of me. And um, for example, when I set it to like, like 80, just driving 80 kilometers straight, so that's a current consumption would be six liters. And that's of course always a good hint. Just setting cruise control, constant speed, that's also good for the consumption then. So if you're driving 80 kilometers an hour constantly in speed, you can expect some six liters in consumption, even lower. Now we're going slightly downhill, it drops automatically down to 4.4 liters. It's really interesting how much you know the terrain, just even if you have some slight changes, is then really also altering the consumption. So oh, we can also put it to the average one and yeah, we got that add blue in here, it says here as well, that is, um, you know, to clear the diesel emissions. So, eight liters it says right now for the, for the, for the consumption in total, just from the few kilometers we've driven, you know. Of course, it's not representative yet, but, you know, as we were in the motorway, that usually uses less fuel. But I'll keep you updated what it is, it is at, the, at the end of our test ride, of course. Talking about the form of the car and then the sound insulation. Well, yeah, it is of course not the most silent car, but it is significantly better than the previous generation of the Caddy. They have worked on that one really a lot. And considering that the car from the outside, uh, sometimes, you know, like a square, <laughs> they're just moving uh, forward into the wind, I think it's it's still reasonably good. So, cannot compare it to you know a very flat sedan, for example. Just thinking about the Volkswagen Passat, that was way more silent. Um, but it's comparable also to other normal passenger cars. So it's not like you feel you're driving a commercial vehicle. You not feel like driving a truck. That's a little bit different in the other Caddy versions that are available because there are also those commercial versions available. They really feel also sound-wise like a truck. Here also the diesel engine is um, is very well isolated. Do I have to turn right here now? It seems like, sorry. Oops, that up. That can also happen. And you know, <laughs> I looked at the GPS down there, was a little bit irritated. Yeah. So it's not too good because then I, when you have the consumption figure in there, you also don't have the GPS information. And that's of course not too good. So I'll maybe switch to the GPS information in the front again. You can always change it at the steering wheel. There it is, GPS again. That will, that will probably help. Oh. I think most of, most of, um, of the customers probably will also just leave out the GPS and maybe install your mobile phone just for the GPS and, well, I mean, why not? But the software of the GPS is, is quite good and you also have um, you know, good controlling over, over the GPS system. By the way, when I'm looking through the windscreen, it is the heated front screen. It is very good for winter times. Um, but to me, I mean, I'm, I always see, you know, these small lines going in there, so I'm not really a big fan of it. But maybe you are, or maybe you say, okay, it's better for me in winter times so that I can really heat it up and I don't care about just seeing through it. But I really do see them. So maybe some agility on the road when I'm going left and right, you see the car is tilting a little bit then, but it's perfectly fine because this car should be set on the comfort and that's, that's really okay. So overall, I think the main thing about driving Volkswagen Caddy Alltrack is it doesn't really feel different than a non track Caddy, definitely. Um, you won't really realize a big difference. But still, the main focus remains. It is a already, you know, quite big car, considering the interior size. On the outside, not that big. Got it very versatile. 
and the driving does not feel like being in a commercial vehicle, not like in a truck. It's normal passenger car driving, but with the space offering of a non-passenger car. And um, I think that's also here, you know, how we can sum up our driving part. Here, by the way, then the road gets a little bit bumpy then, and well, you maybe heard that on camera, but I don't really feel it via the suspension, so it's doing a good job to filter all of that stuff here out. And especially those countryside riding here, very good to enjoy here also. And just look at the countryside, it's maybe one of the best panoramic view cars we've driven so far. Now we go on an off-road trek, hunting the Caddy all trek on that one, and just wait. That one you will be amazed what the vehicle is actually capable of. Now we're tilting it sidewards, and the funny thing is I could pick up the flowers from the from the right part of my camera man now, and you might think of oh we are just falling falling over, you know because the vehicle is also quite tall. But the secret here is that the center of gravity is kept relatively low. And you see here, the right side, you see almost just the sky, and on the uh, left side, the sky, and right side, really just the ground. And um, yeah, that's really amazing. Of course, you're always a little bit afraid, but it's good when you're afraid, because as, so as long as you're afraid, you don't do anything stupid. But it's really, really, really funny feeling when you're tilting that far out. And here, let me cross over here. That's also a nice thing because the right the right rear in, in the back is then just lifting up. But it's also no problem. The all track from the from the standard one here is not really higher than the normal versions, but when we have the four-wheel drive, that one is higher than the two-wheel drive. About two and two and a half centimeters more ground clearance. And of course, that helps us also when going off-road here. And now we're going up a, up a hill. Also some loose gravel here, and I'm going about 2,000 RPMs. And for a four-wheel drive car here, it's no problem. Of course, it gets a little bit rough, um, but you know, it doesn't do anything to the car. We have no hill descent control, but we're going to another very steep hill very soon as well. Um, <clears throat> well, it's good to have a hill descent control, yes, but you don't really necessarily need it. You can just, you know, apply the brakes very, very gently, then it will also work. About suspension, when I'm driving straight here also on some loose ground, it's still very comfortable. And, I mean, looking at this car, the Caddy, you wouldn't expect it's, you know, an off-road capable car. But I'm quite surprised it is. And it's also, also a lot of fun to go off-road, you know. I'm, I'm also an off-road uh, type of guy. I really like doing those things. Now we have a hill that would be a problem for a two-wheel drive, but here with the four-wheel drive, because now with the new generation um, of those all-wheel drive clutch, also more power is transported to the rear wheels, up to 50% to the rear wheels, and we're feeling that right now. Tires are really working, but we hardly have any wheel spin, although the ground is quite off-slippery. Again, very easily mastered. So the front is kind of 50 to 100% of the torque and the rear is 0 to 50% of the torque. So we can get a 50-50 balance from the all-wheel drive here. So yet again, we go a little bit down here and then up another hill where we even have some more slippery ground and a lot of small rocks. And when you have the, the two-wheel drive model, you would need more speed. Here with the four-wheel drive, I don't need so much speed. I could sometimes even stop on the hill and then go up again. Now it gets really rough. I think you also see in camera, car is sliding a little bit just, but we have reasonably good grip. I'm just thinking about those beautiful two-color alloys that we don't then damage them. It would be too bad. So now we're on top of the hill, and that means if you're going to the beach uh, with the with the Caddy All Track um, on holiday you'll be just fine. Now I, I really can't see what's coming. Now when the car is tilting to the front, now I can see the hill. And here the secret is just 
you should not get speed. And so you just press the brakes quite hard, but not really, you know, block all of the wheels. You just roll down very gently. And then you also don't need a hill descent control. You can, you can really just, just feel it. But yeah, but that one, that was a little bit blocking of the wheels, but that's perfectly fine. And so we're then already done. And the thing is what looks very spectacular from the outside and sometimes also from the inside was fairly easy to ride here with the Volkswagen Caddy. And now the conclusion of today's story. Is it just a design package? Basically, yes, but I think it can actually change a lot for this vehicle because to me, this one is really attractive also design-wise now and especially if you combine it, for example, with an off-road sport. As I said earlier, I could imagine, you know, going mountain biking with that one, putting all the stuff in the rear then. And then you also have a fitting exterior to the color and it's not only that you have, okay, you know, very unattractive, not so cool outside and just have the space inside. Here with this version, you can then combine a little bit of the emotional appeal and also the functionality of the interior. And well, it's of course not cheap in this version, especially if you combine with all-wheel drive and the 2-liter TDI, that can get a little bit expensive then definitely. But it's still way cheaper than, for example, if you go for a bigger vehicle class like the Volkswagen Transporter, the T6. But you already have here a lot of space on the interior. We've shown you how flexible it is and that you can even remove the benches quite easily. So this car is really all about maximum space on minimum space on the outside. And therefore, it's also, you know, one of the best vehicles for families, definitely. So I want to hear what you think about this review, about this car, and especially also about the off-road version. And if you enjoyed our small off-road track version here today, I always enjoy off-road riding, especially when I can do it with you together, guys. Thank you very much for watching this Auto Food episode with Tobias, and we'll see each other in one of our next videos.